Hey guys, welcome to another episode of The Vinyl Den, your channel for record collecting by record collectors. My name is Nick. I'm Ian. And today we're going to talk about new records and whether or not we think that uh, newer and thicker records have kind of, at least to a certain degree, led to some warping issues that we've been seeing. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you click on that link down below. Go check out the Vinyl Den Facebook group. It's a cool place to continue the music conversation. There's also a link down there for the Vinyl Den merch page. You get these cool Vinyl Den t-shirts. There's a link for the Vinyl Den Spotify and Apple Music playlists where every week we're just compiling music that we're talking about here on the channel. Put it together on a nice playlist for everyone to enjoy. And there's also a link for the Vinyl Den uh, Patreon page. If you want to support the show, it's, uh, it's always greatly appreciated. You can support the show for as little as a dollar a month. Of course, if you enjoyed the episode, make sure you give us the old thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you're notified every time we release new episodes. So prior to the beginning of the 2000s, vinyl records were you know between 120 to 140 gram. And you can pick it up. If you buy an older pressing of a record, you can, you can, you can pick it up and you can feel a, a, definitely a big difference between a record pressed you know, in, in the 70s, 80s, even early 90s, mm -hmm. and then uh, compare that to what you're you're buying today. There's definitely a weight difference between Absolutely. the two. Absolutely. So over the ca course of the past 20 years or so, we've seen this move from 140 to 100, uh, 120 to 140 gram to what you're getting now, which is 180. And in sometimes, some cases, some, 200. Yeah, sometimes 200. I think a lot of people have kind of gone away from yeah. 200 gram vinyl. I, know, I don't really know if it makes a difference. No, but I know acoustic sounds, a lot of the stuff that they were doing, or some of the stuff they were doing, they were releasing on 200 gram. But that's definitely, you're really not seeing that anymore. It's really just... More niche. Yeah, it, it's, it's really just 180 gram is what you're seeing. So obviously there's a big weight difference there. But over the course of the last probably, you know, at least the last three or four years, I've seen a lot more warping issues right. on these albums than I, anything that I've got in my collection that's older. obviously yeah. older, pressed on, on thinner vinyl. Yeah, I don't know what that is because uh, I've noticed the exact same thing. It doesn't seem to affect the sound vast majority of the time. But you, you, if you look at your record, you can see the wave. Yeah. Um, and I don't see it when I play older pressings. Yeah. You know. My, now, my thing is with older pressings, because they're thinner, are they flattening out a little bit more? So maybe right. you're not noticing any kind of uh, any kind of warp to it? Because I will say, like, that, that's the one. So I've, I, I do use a record weight mm. if I've got a warp in, in, in a record. And those older pressings I do have, that some have, a, you know, kind of a wave to it, especially if it's like 140 or 160 gram. That record weight really flattens it out. Does it? But if you've got a warp on a 180 gram, it'll flatten it out a little bit, but it's still pr it can be pretty noticeable sometimes. Yeah. yeah I don't know. Like I said, I, I haven't noticed it affect the, the sound quality except for one record. I've only had one that had a, a distinct problem with the warp. You yeah. know, there's a problem in the sound as a result of the warp. But everything else, I, I would say every record I've bought in the last two years is wavy all of them a lot of them and I it doesn't again it doesn't affect the sound quality at all i don't hear that you know the, the distortions that you might hear from a from a warp but it does beg the question why you know if you're not seeing it in older records why are you seeing it in newer records and one we were reading articles before we started recording and one commenter said that he was told that it's because the pressing plants aren't letting the albums cool long enough which i can definitely see that yeah especially with the the backlog we've seen at pressing plants over the last couple of years if they're just rushing albums out just to to get them out of the warehouse i can definitely see that being an issue right but i i personally think that that would lead to other quality control issues that i have not personally seen yeah but then again i don't buy records at the same volume that other people buy them at you know a little bit more conservative when it comes to that but it's hard to say. I mean, that does make sense, and it would be an explanation for it. I would think that if something's going on, at, at, you know, there's not a whole lot of, of record plants that get, you know, mass releases. You know, right. I would say a vast majority of the records we get every year come from about 10 record plants spread yeah. out across the, uh, the world. So if there's a specific pressing plant that you're having a lot of warping issues with, 
I would assume that would get corrected, or the labels right. just wouldn't use that plant to pro- to press records. Right. You know, if they know that they're this one particular plant is rushing stuff out and is leading to issues, I mean, I would think that would be pretty easily e- easily spotted. Right. And I mean, it also could be the fact that the the labels aren't getting enough returns to justify even worrying about it because, as I said, we're not noticing any real sound issues. Yeah. You know, in the, in the quality, so maybe it's just something that they're just letting slide because it's not. It'd be more cost it, more cost prohibited prohibited to say something and, and risk shutting yeah. everything down than to just you know replace a handful of yeah. records. You know, because I bought I, I buy quite a few records, mm-hmm. and I would say a majority of them over the last probably two years have had some kind of warp to right. it. At you least know, a visible. It, one. Yeah, yeah, and I'll, most of them are just—it's very minor. It's not an issue. I've had very few albums that had like really severe warping issues. Mm-hmm. That, uh, and I don't think any of the ones I've had have really affected playback right. at all. But um, you know, there always tends to be some kind of wobble to that mm-hmm. uh, album when you put it on the turntable. Me too. Yeah. This topic came up a little while back, maybe probably a month or so back, in the uh, Vinyl Den Facebook group. About all the warping issues, and that kind of where it got me thinking. You know, is this this you know the thicker records? Is that really kind of leading to some of the warping issues that we're seeing? I don't know. It's kind of a question I wanted to kind of throw out to the vinyl community and see what you guys thought about it. Because you know, maybe I wonder if it'd be, we'd be better off going back to thinner thinner, thinner albums because it would, it would arguably save money. I would think records would be a little cheaper because it's using down. less material. And we've got plenty of records in both of in either of our collections that are old and 120 gram and are still sound fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. So there shouldn't be any longevity questions no. involved with, you know, thinner record. You know, I, I could kind of see it. If that were the case, I would see it as a win-win, really. Yeah, because it should lower costs. And I would think you would have fewer warping issues just because if you did have some kind of like bull warp right. you know where the sides come up yeah, it, that might be a little different than what i'm seeing i'm seeing but, more like but a, what i'm saying though is something like that if it's a thinner record should be a lot easier to, oh, flatten to identify out. and then flatten out yeah. right right i don't know it's, it, it, like i said it's something i wanted to throw out to the vinyl community let us know what you guys think because i think like like i said it, it might maybe we are better off kind of going back to thin a record, especially, like I said, the, the prices of records have gotten kind of ridiculous. But then again, if you look at used records, which are thinner, the prices of those have, kind of, have gone up also. Yeah, well, but that's, I think that's just infl- That's like just the market. Infl- yeah, market inflation. Yeah, so on the last note, what you guys think, because uh, like I said, it's, I, I think it's a, a, a kind of a valid conversation I think we can have. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, if you enjoyed the episode, make sure you give us the old thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below. And that's all we got. Until next time. Talk to y'all later. Keep on spinning. Peace.